Welcome to Digital Marketing Solutions, the only podcast hosted by a marketing and startup consultant with over 20 years experience working for ad agencies across the world. Start getting the results you want with online marketing today. And now, here's your host, David Summerfleck. And hello there. My name is David Summerfleck. Thank you for listening or watching another episode of Digital Marketing Solutions. This episode is sponsored by the Digital Marketing Specialists online at dms.blue. My guest today, Sharice Sutherland. Take it away, Sharice. How are you today? I am fantastic. How are you doing? Very, very well. I should say blessed, not stressed. Absolutely. I've got my tea here that we picked up at a local church, and it is a navy blue, so don't anybody say it's not blue. And Sharice, let's get started with who you are. I know who you are, but let's get started in, you know, who you are, your background, your education, all that good stuff, and then see okay. way into my list of questions here. Awesome. So I am Sharice Marie. I am a Pinterest expert. I help entrepreneurs, pr primarily spiritual based entrepreneurs, um, you know, holistic healers, that kind of stuff. Um, intuitives have a lot of those clients. I help them to supercharge their marketing strategy using Pinterest so they can have the income and the impact that they dream of so that they can have the life that they want without having to be on social media all the all, time. All so day long. For their next clients, because that's no fun at all. <laughs> now, you said spiritual and healers? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Why them, and how did you come to that, 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 that group? And, and I, I guess yeah. so many questions for you. I know. Well, I do help other people, but those are my favorite people to work with. Um, I am very intuitive myself and I'm, I'm kind of new agey. I wouldn't say that I am religious. I am probably closer to a Buddhist than anything. I'm very open. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I love your Buddha. Um, I have one too. He probably can't see all. I of remember. Him. Yes. I see him. Yes. I see him. Um, so yeah. I, those are the people that I resonate the most with. I understand their market. Um, I actually, when I first came into the digital space, um, I'm a firm believer that, you know, the doors that are meant to be ours open and the ones that aren't meant to be ours don't open. Um, my first thing that I wanted to try was actually being a life coach. It was teaching people this stuff. It was, you know, taking them from stressed out, anxious messes to people who could listen to their intuition and really hone in on who they were meant to be in the world. Mm. And I love doing that but it's not my door. It's not the thing that opened for me. Um, what actually opened for me was I had some fellow coaches that I did some VA work for, virtual assistant for those of you who don't know. Um, and one of those clients had me doing her Pinterest stuff. And of course I was in the middle of trying to learn a million and five ways to make a funnel work because I was convinced that the other thing was my door. And so I was helping all of these VA clients to get amazing results and using Pinterest in a lot of cases to get them there because I learned it and I loved it. I mean, I was probably one of the first hundred people to sign up for a Pinterest account. <laughs> I've been a member for a really long time. Um, and so with doing that, I realized that while I really wanted that to be my door, what was actually my door was being more of the behind the scenes for other mm. entrepreneurs who were doing that and helping them to expand their reach and watching them grow their businesses has been kind of the, the joy of my life, well, let's say. Okay. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. So on your website and your bio that I looked at, mm -hmm. you talk a lot about building funnels and I'm sure you know the term funnels has been used and misused like 
what's a good metaphor, like a cigarette at a, at a AA meeting, um, passed, you know, just passed around. Yes. It can, people easily confuse the term or don't quite grasp it. A funnel is, you're referring to the design element, right? Well, really, a funnel is anything that takes people from point A to point B in that buying journey. So you're bringing them down into the journey. You've got the big group. An inverted of pyramid for world. those who are listening. You've got your entire world. You've got, you know, the people that want your free thing. Out of those, you might have people that are able to buy your more less expensive thing. And then at the end, you're hopefully working one-on-one -on -one with the people who are kind of the cream of the crop, let's say. So for your, is, for it, your is it fair to say that a funnel at least is, how you use it is you're talking about a, a basically user centric design, like an inverted pyramid where you're trying to put the most important information at the top first. Here's what we do and why we do it. And then how you, the viewer can benefit from it. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Well, usually what I like to start with is a really big win first for the client. So whatever your best stuff is, I like to start with that. The thing that's going to give them the most bang for their buck. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's the thing that's going to turn them into a raving fan where they're like, holy crap, if she's giving that away for free, what else have they got hidden behind the door that I can also have access to? Okay. And that's a fun one, right? Like that's like the that makes people more curious about you. It makes them really excited to learn about you and to get to know you a little bit and be like, I want more. I want more. It's like, yeah. Love, right? <laughs> you want to allows the emotions uh, because people make decisions based on emotion, not necessarily mm -hmm. logic, which is both good to know, but bad in practice in a lot of cases. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, I know I asked you why Pinterest. How does Pinterest, for those who are not familiar with it first, let's talk about how Pinterest is different or unique okay. and then get into the whole Wild West uh, part. So Pinterest is, it is completely a unique idea. A lot of people think that Pinterest is social media, but it isn't. Pinterest is a search engine. But it is a different search engine from Google. So very much. Yeah. And it, yeah. So think of Pinterest as if Google and Amazon had a baby. Okay. That's Pinterest. Pinterest is a visual search engine. It is the only visual search engine in the world. It's actually the number three search engine. Number two, if you consider that. Google and YouTube are basically the same company. So <laughs> there's the alphabet company and then there is Pinterest as in the number two slot. Okay. But using it, it's not a fair comparison to compare the Google images search with Pinterest, but some people use it that way, don't they? Google image search is a little more generic pinterest is better for pinterest is a lot of their result a lot of google's results come from pinterest so let's just say that off the bat Absolutely. a lot of google is pulling results from pinterest which is another great reason to use pinterest when it comes to trying to get your name out there and be seen on all the platforms mm. um, but pinterest's beauty is that every single pin that is on Pinterest, except for the really old ones, every single pin that is on Pinterest points somewhere. Now, whether that link still works or not is a different story, mm -hmm. but every single pin points to something, whether it is a product or a service or a blog post or a YouTube video or a website or a Facebook group Facebook groups, fantastic for Pinterest. Um, nobody else is using that, by the way. I think there's like three Pinterest strategists in the world that are using Pinterest for Facebook groups. No, why is that? 
because yeah. nobody's thought of it. It's such a new concept. So that it's not there's a lot of people are using it for. Okay. You know, there's only half a million people that are actually like half a million businesses that are on YouTube actively marketing. Well, not even act actively. Most of them aren't even actively marketing. No, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the same statistics I have that for the most part, and this is always this tremendous irony, is that the businesses that need to get more leads are statistically the ones that are not online. You, Absolutely. You cannot find them in Google search results. You can't, you, it's almost, I don't want to say you can't help them, but the interest is down there. Every, yes. They're the ones going to the Wix and the Weebly and the Squarespace and wondering why nobody's calling them. But let's say for the sake of Joe Blow's Pizzeria, he's thinking, I can put my recipes on Pinterest. How would that, how would that convert into people calling? Well, local businesses are a little bit trickier to market on Pinterest. I'm not going to lie. If you have a regional or a local business, um, you're going to have to be very, very strategic in making sure that your hashtags are on point, that your keywords are on point, um, and that you are telling Pinterest specifically who your where your target market lives. Um, and Pinterest doesn't always know because Pinterest yeah. sometimes does, but if you moved from when you first registered, they're not going to necessarily have your correct information. So it's kind of a crapshoot whether you're going to get the right people if you're a local business. However, what he could do is have, create a recipe book maybe, mm -hmm. and maybe he sells that for 10 bucks. And maybe he has like, two recipes his best two recipes and he puts them on a blog of some kind or on a landing page with the option for them to upsell to the whole thing to the book right so and then they also can find out you know more about the restaurant and where it's located and have some fantastic food pictures um so you could definitely do that and then just have a series of pins that all drive traffic into that those landing pages with those maybe two fantastic recipes, maybe one for each recipe and see which one does better. And then you're doing an upsell. So then you're like almost a self-liquidating funnel at that point, right? Yeah. And like you said, if you have a Pinterest pin, which is the image, you have... Now, did, would hashtags work in the title? You don't want to put hashtags in the title. I've never you tried want to, it. You want to put hashtags in the description at the bottom. So, that's where Pinterest is going to look for them. So that would be where we would focus on the hyper-local. New York Italian restaurant, New York pizzeria. Well, you could also put that in the in the title and in the description itself, but not with a hashtag. Right. Because Pinterest isn't going to look for the hashtags in the middle of, like, it doesn't really look for them anywhere except for at the bottom. <laughs> okay. So there's, there's literally, I, I'm on Pinterest, but mm -hmm. I don't check it daily. I don't advertise on Pinterest. And I think part of that is I'm in digital marketing. So... I'm thinking, okay, I don't exactly look like Brad Pitt. It's the hand I've been dealt. It is what it is. Do I want to put infographics on Pinterest and think that that would attract a, the type of business owner who I would want to attract? Or is it not an ideal fit for me? You know what? Infographics have a place. Um, infographics are going to be saved and resaved and shared and printed and all of that kind of stuff. Infographics don't tend to be, get clicks. And what you actually want on Pinterest is clicks. So, I don't care how many shares I get. I want clicks. So something startling. 
something startling. Um, you definitely don't have to put your own face on pins. That is, right. hardly anybody does that. Um, you want to use beautiful images. If you can take pictures, yay. Um, mm -hmm. You can use stock images if they are going to resonate with your clients, it, you know, with your potential clients. You could use um, paid ones. You could use free ones. You can use... and. Really, you want to use something like Canva or uh, there's a couple other Pixa, Pixa Monkey or something like that um, to Pixa Monkey, I haven't heard of. Something like that um, to upgrade your images from just a static picture to a picture with some text on mm. top of it, maybe a couple of fun, fun elements, lines or wigglies or mandalas or whatever, right? Where you are then making it more visually interesting than a plain picture. So I'm thinking about how to take what you're saying and put it into action. Uh -huh. So for example, if I'm doing a podcast interview right now with a Pinterest expert, yeah. Um, so I could take a screenshot of us talking yeah. during the podcast and mm -hmm. put that on Pinterest and say, here's my interview with Pinterest specialist, Sharice Sutherland. Uh, she's really fun to talk to. Boy, this is, is great. And then put in the, uh, description or rather a link to the actual podcast interview itself or a link to the podcast video. Yes. So there's a couple of things there. With the pin graphic itself, you would want to have a picture maybe of both of us, maybe just one of us doing something fun. Maybe you want to like, I, I'm, I'm just, for some reason, I'm seeing that one being skewed like crooked or something with a co cool background color that stands out in the feed of other people doing similar things okay. so using your hashtags you're going to look at your pinterest feed and you want to make sure that you are not going to be nlp you don't want to be lost in the sea you want to be you want to stand out you want to use colors that are different from everybody else so if everybody else is using bright poppy colors you want to come in with a muted color that's going to stand out mm -hmm. if everybody else is using those muted grays and baby pinks that are really popular right now you want to use like this beautiful blue that you've got on here and really just pop it so that people go oh that's different from everything else so that you stop that scroll that's the pattern interrupt is what we're looking for. So that's number one. And then on that pin, you also want to include just three to five words that encapsulate what they'll get if they click. And maybe an arrow, maybe uh, something. Then your title, your title is going to be probably whatever the title is for the podcast. In the description, you want to give them another. That's a really great place to sell yourself. So you are... Think of that pin description as ad copy. You are writing ad copy for why they should click. Why should they give you their eyeballs and potentially their email address? What is in it for them? Now on this topic of video, because we're doing a video interview, but we're also going to take the audio and make this available as an audio podcast. So if I, if I have the choice is one better than the other in Pinterest? And my other part of that question is, will Pinterest let me, and should, would I want to, directly upload a video to Pinterest? Like okay. you would with something like TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever. Great questions. Okay, Pinterest does allow video ad or video pins, but they can only be 15 to 30 seconds long wow or less wow. <laughs> so you want to you want to do like just a sliver of it if you're going to do that um the best way to do a a pin video is to just you can do it in canva now you can animate your pins or your your graphics so that one little piece of it will bounce or something like that that's your best bet when it comes to creating video pins it really works um, I've done it with a few clients now, and it really converts. You can send those now. Also, you can sorry, I'm not, but you can also send those that pin traffic to anywhere, and it really just depends what your audience resonates with. So try both 
and see which one they want to click on. Okay. Whichever one is the winner, keep going with that. Lean into what works. Because what I was going to ask you was, you were saying either a video that's 15 seconds long, or do you suggest an animated GIF image? Is one better than another? Does it matter? Um, you, I don't know if they actually upload GIFs. Um, I think they only do MP4. So Canva actually, when you animate something, it downloads it as an MP4 for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know that they will. I love Canva, by the way, for those listening, it's a, it's fun, but it also now has a great video making tool. Absolutely. Um, I hope that they add some more variety to the music pretty soon and some more options to that. Uh, as far as making actual working websites, no, not so much. Ho hopefully they'll add more depth to that soon. It is fun uh to use but right now that's at a pretty basic level Where, it's coming. you know it's coming right <laughs> i i hope so uh because yeah. as many of these automated diy template generator things that they have out there in the small business owners and the entrepreneurs and everything looking for something cheap or free the bottom line is that there's no substitution for the human being to sit down and actually work with you hand in glove to make sure that people are calling you and emailing you and want to do business with you. A tool in and of itself isn't going to get you from point A to point B. So I welcome it um, as an additional tool for a tool bell. Um, now, as far as Pinterest itself, are there situations where it's not ideal for someone? there are some niches where it is harder for sure um for example and and there are some situations where it doesn't make sense um you do need to know who your ideal client is and you need to know that whatever you're offering them is something that they actually want so right. you kind of have to proof of you have to proof of concept that somewhere other than pinterest Pinterest, because it's the long game, it's going to give you like three to six months from now. It's going to give you like pretty good results, but maybe not right away. Um, you need to know for sure that what you're offering your people is something that they actually will click on and convert on. So you have to prove that your funnel, the, the thing that gets them from point A to point B in your sales uh, process actually works before you start with Pinterest. Now I have to ask, you and your preferred type of client is the, the healer or religious based? Um, uh, not religious, but intuition-y, witchy, spiritual, uh, I keep saying spiritualist, but I don't mean like in a religious sense. I mean like they are, um, they're mediums or they're psychics or they are they teach people how to do those kinds of things that oh, kind of spiritual man. i have questions for you when we when we stop the podcast okay. <laughs> awesome uh, so let's say are there i mean if you're a lawyer is Pinterest going to help you get more clients if you show images? Of, well, you can't show images of you talking to clients because that's going to violate their their own right to privacy. Right. You can actually. Um, I actually know of a couple of lawyers who are using Pinterest um, to drive traffic to their website. Um, they're not necessarily like trial lawyers or anything like that. Um, and they are offering more general information and trying to get um, a more expanded reach than just in their local area. Right. So they are trying to do something that is more online based. But you definitely can. As legal would be a great one for infographics to get people and then offer them further information by clicking through. Mm -hmm. So they get the top three or four ideas 
and then click click through and learn more. Now, let me ask you your opinion on this, because even though I'm on Pinterest, I'm not on it. Uh -huh. So let's say for I want to get your opinion on this. Let's say for the sake of example, we have a church and uh -huh. we have a big mega church like Greenleaf or something. OK, just for the sake of example. Yeah. That church could have a presence on Pinterest. I think of churches as money making machines, even though most people don't. They just don't see the connection at all because I see a church, I think visual podcast, I think audio podcast, I see books, I see workshops, I see seminars, I see virtual retreats, I see uh, virtual, um, not consultations, but consultations. I see a uh -huh. dating site for a, a church singles group online. Weddings you know, and funerals and all the things. Yes, absolutely. all of that. And Child care and yes. <laughs> so could that church conceivably use Pinterest, but also have subgroupings and say, well, look, we have a singles group at our church. Let's have a subgroup on Pinterest so that the singles can see photos of other singles. Could that conceivably work? And let's take it a step further and say the church also has a church store and it could look very nice like your background, right? Where they're selling books and, and things like that. Here are the items that you can see on Pinterest. Click this link to make a purchase. Could that in theory work? Yes and no. Here's the thing about Pinterest. Any pin that you put on Pinterest, the second someone else saves your pin to one of their boards, you've lost control of it because that's just the way it works. The mm -hmm. goal is to share the content, right? So if you are putting someone's face on Pinterest and they are now happily married, then you either have a dead link because you've taken that down. So it's no good to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Or they're being harassed because people are still, you know, reaching out to them because they're interested. So you, yeah, so it's a sticky. It's yeah, it's, it's a sticky thing. So yeah. you can, but so maybe you're doing it. There are all the dating sites, and I have a dating coach actually that is on Pinterest. Um, they're not necessarily, you know, here's a person they're marketing more as wouldn't it be nice to find your person click through and let's talk or here's click this, through and let's find more here's this sexy model don't you wish you could date the sexy model if you want to here's this link absolutely. to sign up for my dating uh site absolutely or here are um i've seen products where you know it's maybe a a short term, like a seasonal product, but they know for sure that they're going to carry more of it all the time. For example, say you are, um, you sell shoes. So you know, you're going to have a lot of different kinds of sandals every year. Right. And you're going to have sandals all the time. So instead of just showing a picture of one pair of sandals, maybe they're showing three or four pictures of pairs of sandals maybe in place with something fun going on in the world instead of just a plain white background, which doesn't sell. Sorry, not sorry. On Pinterest, it's all about the visuals. A plain white background, boring. Nobody wants it. And then in the middle, maybe you're saying, check out our this season's hottest new looks, right? Mm -hmm. So then people are clicking. They're hoping that those shoes are still available. But even if they're not, you're still going to get them to that section of your website where they're going to be able to find sandals and you're always going to have sandals. So on the topic of design, I know you can save or share pins. Have you ever seen anybody, and this just occurred to me as someone who enjoys design, has anybody ever used actual embed codes or where they take the, the image from Pinterest? that they have presented on Pinterest and used it for their own website, in their own website. And would there be any advantages to doing that? Or would it completely screw up your SEO totally? Absolutely not even a little bit. So actually that is called rich pins. 
So basically what you want to do when you're on Pinterest, thank you for asking. And I don't even on, use it to so go. Absolutely. When you're on Pinterest and you're a Pinterest user, you can apply for what's called rich pins. And when you do, what you do is you create those pins mm. that you want to put on your Pinterest or that you want to put on Pinterest and bed a couple of them into your blogs, use them in your websites and in the alt text and in the description of the pin, mm -hmm. you put, you put in there, or you leave it and you put it in your um, the meta description for the page that it's on. Um, what the what you want the pin description to say. Okay. And then people can save your pictures directly to Pinterest. You can save your pictures directly to Pinterest. So it would be really. Let's say I'm interviewing you and I take a photo of our conversation or screenshot, put it on Pinterest. Now, if I make a blog post of, uh, hey, here's my interview with Sharice. This is what we discussed. Here's a brief summary, right? Here's how you can listen to it on Google Podcasts. Here's how you can watch it on YouTube and so on and so forth. Now, in that blog post page, I could take the image from Pinterest, which is the embed code, basically, and put that in the blog post. That could yes. conceivably help my SEO. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely helps your SEO because it's backlinks. Okay. So every pin that you get is a backlink. Now, one thing that I will say about that, because you're talking like one pin. Okay, one pin's great. I encourage, in fact, I insist that all of my clients have between 15 and 25 pin templates. It's a great idea. And then, and then they use each of those pin templates to create that many pins for each piece of content. Mm, okay. So that you're not just doing one pin one time for one thing. Heck no. 25 to 30. Maybe even 30. Maybe you're going crazy and you have 30 pin templates. I have a client who's doing that right now. She's yeah. actually taking a million years. Um, and so you've got maybe 30 pin templates and you've got 10 boards. Are you, that's 10 is a good number to start with and then you want to increase that every year. Okay. So you've got 10 boards, 30 pin templates that you're making onto those 10 boards. That's what, 3,000 pins? I, I can't make notes fast enough here. That's 3,000 pins in the space of however long it took you to create those pins once for 25 pins or three that you're giving or me an idea on top of idea. I know. And here's the sad, here's the, the mind blowing thing. There are 70 million Pinterest users worldwide. Now about 60% of them, no, closer to 80% of them are Americans. That's what I was going to ask you. Of those, 40% have a household income over $100,000 a year. Huh. They're mostly college educated. And there are less than a million business accounts on Pinterest. And of those, probably only half of them are actually using it in any way, shape, or form. Maybe less than that are using it in any way, shape, or form that could actually get them results. Why the disconnect? Because it's unknown. Because there, there weren't a lot of people like me who knew the ins and outs well enough to teach it. There weren't people like me who were shouting from the rooftops, hey, do you want more eyeballs on your stuff for almost free and with very little effort? Now, one of the pros to that is that by having Pinterest basically being invisible to business owners, or at least a lot of business owners, not all of them, obviously, would that make the advertising rates more competitive? Absolutely. The ad rates are about what Pinterest or what Facebook was probably five years ago maybe 10 years ago. Okay, so that's good. That's it's a Absolutely. plus. Okay. Yeah. And you don't even need and you don't even need Pinterest ads. That's the script, the crazy thing. Yes, Pinterest ads are fantastic, but the organic reach is where it's at. Now, I want to backtrack and ask you 
there was something that you mentioned about applying for rich pins. Is mm -hmm. that right? How do you apply for rich pins and what criteria do you have to meet? Okay, so there's two steps to that. The first step is to claim your website. Now you claim your website, you go to the Pinterest back end and or not even the back end, it's in your settings when you're a business account. And you say, I want to claim my website. They'll give you a little piece of code that you put into your website. Now, right. ordinarily, if you have a WordPress or a Squarespace account, you simply plug that into your SEO section, Yoast or All-in-One or Squarespace has its own little spot and that covers your entire website. If you have something like Kajabi or Kartra or one of the other guys, you have to do that in the header of every page. Kill me now. Seriously, kill me now. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even entertain it. Yeah. Um, so once you do that, then you click on the claim my website and it spins the thing and then it claims your website. Once your website has been claimed, it takes about 24 hours for them to do their pingy thing back and forth and make sure that you really seriously actually have it. Um, once you've done that, then there's another spot. You have to kind of Google it because I, I can't do the whole thing off the top of my head, but there is another spot on Pinterest where you can then request that to enable rich pins okay. and once rich pins are enabled on that website that you already claimed, then Bob's your uncle and you're good to go. Okay. So that is for my to-do list. So <laughs> let's I have a quick start guide. If you want to, you know, <laughs> I, I've always liked Pinterest being a, a visual guy. I studied film in college for almost two years, so I love the power of the image. Um, I don't think I believe that, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. It's not something to believe in, literally, I don't think. But I, I do see the, the interest in Pinterest, no pun intended. So let's talk about on your website where you talk about businesses failing and I think it was something that you had mentioned to me before about the lack of having a proper funnel. Yes. Why is that and how does that play into Pinterest's um, efficacy okay. or efficiency? So if they don't have a funnel, what happened, what's generally happening is they've got this beautiful website and they Hopefully. don't ask for email, yeah. and they don't ask for email addresses. They don't offer anything of value. They don't have a way to get in contact with you. They don't have a book now page. None of that stuff exists on this beautiful website that they're probably spent a small fortune on, and they're paying a fortune every year to to keep it going. They probably have blog posts without a call to action on them. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, they have a YouTube channel, maybe no calls to action on any of those videos. Maybe they're not even saying in the video, like subscribe. They're definitely not putting anything in the description. Hey, go get my free thing. Cause they don't have a free thing yeah. or even worse. Well, not even worse, but that's level one. Level two is they're offering something, but they didn't do the market research first and their audience doesn't want it. Yeah. Maybe somebody else's audience would want it, but their audience doesn't want it. And you can't sell somebody something that they don't want. I mean, you can, but you have to be really good. Right. And, and I think that's a really important thing because every type of business has something that your ideal consumer wants or you wouldn't be in business. So for the lawyer, I think it would be... Um, you know, maybe a, an audit or an audit sheet that they could download for you. It could be, you know, the top 10 reasons or the top 10 ways businesses make money using Pinterest. You know, um, I have a ton of freebies on my site and there's just so many more to create uh, to give away. 
because like you said, the idea is like you're going to Whole Foods. A lot of people have a hard time giving something for nothing. But the idea is like you go to Whole Foods and they off, they don't offer you the whole chicken. They give you one chicken nugget with the idea being you're going to go and buy the whole chicken. Costco is legendary for this. I've seen people get entire meals going from one person to the other in Costco and putting it, you know, putting together, you know, I got the cheese from here. I got this from here. I got this. I never tried over here because they know that you're more likely to say that was kind of yummy. Let me go and, and buy a big giant case of it now. Yeah. Did you know, speaking of Costco, that the hot dogs that they sell in their restaurant cafeteria section, they actually lose money on them? No, I didn't know that. But it's the, the reason is obvious. They want to bring you in. It's a loss leader yeah. because they sell those hot dogs and those buns at the store. Yeah. And we know that. So when we're craving a Costco hot dog, we can just buy them in bulk and bring them home and have Costco hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's absolutely true. And yeah. um, every business should have uh, free giveaways that their ideal market wants. And you have to figure that part out. That's the hardest part is, I think, yes. getting them to, getting the business owner to cross the street with you, so to speak, that yes, we'll give away something of value for free in order to stimulate interest. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not about getting that email address because the email address is neither here nor there. Really, I mean, yeah, you want to accumulate them, but it really doesn't do any good. What you want is, David, I downloaded your uh, ebook about uh, SEO equaling more customers. Now I want you to implement it for me. Absolutely. You know, yes. I, I saw your ebook on uh, Pinterest and I read it. I can't do it all myself, it's too much. I just want to pay you to do it for me. That's Absolutely. the ideal yeah. scenario. And that's why and anybody watching or listening should have a free giveaway. Absolutely. And your free giveaway should be your most valuable thing. And I think I mentioned this before. You should be giving away your best stuff. If you have a 10 step process to do something, the step that everybody mm. raves about, that's the step you give away. And, and you, teach them how to do that on their own. And, you know, I'm thinking directly about one thing specifically, too. I just finished like a 30 page workbook that I I give to pretend. Well, I give to clients who are serious. We go through mm -hmm. an onboarding process. So I have a workbook that walks them through what digital marketing is, how it works, how to budget appropriately for ROI identifying your ideal consumer on and on and on i don't know if i want to give that away yet but maybe you're giving away the most valuable piece of that i'm not saying you're giving away all of it i'm saying you're giving away the most valuable thing the most the thing that every single client when they read or hear that that one piece they go that's the thing i was missing if most of your clients have that one piece that they say, that's the thing, thank you, thank you, that's the piece you give away. Yeah, I agree with you. And and realistically, you if I use that as an example, you could take two pages from that book and make that a mini giveaway. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've seen accountants give away audit worksheets. Um, yeah. No, let's... Here's, the, here's the big thing with that. Let's the thing that you give away needs to be a really quick win. A 30 page workbook, they're going to lose interest after two yeah. three pages. It needs to be short. It needs to be impactful, and it really needs to give them a wow factor. They're like, they're giving this away. This is the free thing. What are they doing for? paid stuff yeah i think this how much more is behind the curtain <laughs> how, to, yeah. how to how to get to number one in google with yeah. with within 90 days or less so uh -huh. okay so i need to drink more caffeine and get to work on that tomorrow 
So let's get to, <laughs> you had something else about people futzing with their avatar. And it's, yes. and I remember oh you mentioning God. that to me. And for those watching or listening, Sharice is a very, very nice person. I have a lot of fun talking to you. We spoke before this podcast and we went over yeah. what we would talk about. We just called a pre-interview and we talked about people futzing. And I, I don't know about YouTube, if they censor it, I like profanity. I think it's a little salt and pepper to how you speak. But futzing with their avatar instead of making an offer. Yes. So, so I want you to go ahead and touch on that. And then I have a question about it. Okay. There are so many coaches out there who tell you that you need to be really granular with what you know about this person who is your ideal customer. What's her name? What kind of car does she drive? What kind of shoes do they wear? Um, where do they shop? What kind of restaurants do they eat in? Um, what's their favorite food? Yeah. So that you know, like, her name is, I'm going to do it. Her name is Karen, and she's got blonde hair, and she's 33 years old, and she has a Louis Vuitton bag, and she wears Crocs on the weekend, and she, she likes um, Polo Ralph Lauren stuff. Uh, it, they're really, really specific. There's my Crocs. <laughs> I am not a Karen. I am not a Karen. None of, but, I'm none sorry, of that ahead. matters. Yeah. None of it matters. Not one piece of that matters. Who gives a toot? I don't. Yeah. Do you? No. What no. are their pain points? What are the problems right now? What are they looking for in an outcome? Period. That is all I care about. What's their pain web? And what is their dream life made up of? That's it. That is all I need to know about my ideal client. My ideal client, they are struggling. They are overwhelmed by all of the social media demands. They are doing all the things. They are on the content creation hamster wheel. They are overwhelmed with trying to do outreach and talking to people and doing all the things on all the social media platforms. They're probably on two, three, four platforms and it's making them nuts. Yeah. Their hair is falling out. They're spending money on ads. They are not getting the results that they dream of. And what they want is to be doing it on autopilot. They want someone to take it over for them so they don't have to do all that crap. And that's what Pinterest gives them. Yeah, tighten it up and be a little bit more focused. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, they have to know who they're trying to reach and why they're trying to reach them. So if you're going to work with a new client, you have to onboard them and get through that. So how do you get through all that dross material so you can get to what really matters. I personally, I don't like working with new coaches who don't know these things already. Um, I can, they're not my favorite clients because a lot of times what happens is when you're a new, new into the, into your niche, you don't really know the answers to those things yet. You don't know what their pain web is completely. You don't know the, problems that you can actually solve for people that they want you to solve for them yeah and so you know they can spend you can spend a good three to six months fooling with this before you figure out your groove and that is really hard to try and get anywhere on pinterest if you're constantly pivoting and shifting so yeah i can do it but it's going to take longer. <laughs> it's going to take longer. There's going to be more heavy lifting. So Absolutely. So we're coming close to the, the tail end of this. I want to ask your opinion. Where okay. do you see Pinterest heading or evolving? Do you see it using more video or getting more, more pimped out, so to speak? I absolutely see them using more video. I see them, um, I see them, to be perfectly honest, embedding YouTube videos in the near future. I don't know why, and I might be wrong. They might want to stick with the shorter, you know, attention getting ones, but I see them becoming more of a, a platform where you can consume other content on their platform. Because right now you have to click off their platform to consume the content. And to some extent, I think that would be good 
But then another yeah. part of me would think, would not make them more like their competitors? I don't think so, because they are still going to be what you're where you're going to search for things and it really because you're a search engine yes you want to send them to the right place but some of those right places could be read or consumed on their platform so then they're not clicking off and forgetting to come back right i do think that that definitely is would be a great thing because Mm -hmm. That's something that they would want, and it would probably make things easier for digital marketing people like me. Yeah, yeah, I see them, you know, possibly even doing some kind of integration with purchasing. That would be great. So that you, so that you can simply click to purchase right on Pinterest. Um, I don't know how soon. Maybe they weren't looking at that. I don't know. But in my vision of a utopia for Pinterest, they're host they're they're pulling content in blog posts and all of the things and so that you can consume it on their con on their platform without having to leave the platform right i yeah and and the more people who leave their platform are not going to come back right away at least so it's in their uh, better interest to do that so before we tie any things uh, up here, do you have any parting thoughts or any questions that you uh, wish I had perhaps asked you? I don't think so. Uh, the real thing that I want to stress is that Pinterest can be a gold mine for finding leads on autopilot, but you really need to know who your target market is. You have to know that pain web really well be able to just spit it out on autopilot. I did it. Um, you have to be able to um, speak to what their dream life looks like, whatever that is for your clients. You need to know how to bridge the gap. You have to absolutely pull them along so that they can believe that. And if you can do that, you're gonna be successful. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can do it, but I'll give it a shot. And I think everybody listening or watching should make the effort as well. You've got nothing to lose. So, Absolutely. Sharice, I always have fun talking to you. How can people watching this or listening get in touch with you and uh, get your help? Perfect. Um, so my website is sharicemarie.com. I do have a quick start success guide that is the link is there. You can certainly sign up for that. I love that. Um, you can also find me on all social medias with Sharice Pins. That's my hashtag. Um, that is my YouTube channel, my Pinterest account, and my Facebook account. Um, and that is, the name of it is Sharice Pins, S-H-E-R-I-S-S-E. -S -S -E. um, and <laughs> hashtag is Sharice Pins as well. Well, I had a blast talking to you and I learned a few new things and I'm sure everybody listening or watching did as well. So awesome. uh, I appreciate your time and I am your host, David Summerfleck online at DMS.blue. Thank you for watching or listening to another episode of Digital Marketing Solutions. If you enjoyed this, please give it a positive review. Please consider subscribing and Thank you again, everybody, and stay tuned for the next episode. And that's it for now. You've been listening to the Digital Marketing Solutions Podcast. To get future episodes as soon as they drop, apply to be a guest, submit questions, or to get direct help with your digital marketing visit www.dms.blue today. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give Digital Marketing Solutions a positive review or hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as our next episode goes live. Thanks and talk with you next episode.